So let's start uh, and thank you everyone for being here. So we'll continue the reflections on the Lojong verses on training the mind. And before we start with the verses, let's have uh, uh, the reading of the Bodhisattva vows. I'll just put it in front and then we can read. So if uh, one of you can just read this, uh, these vows for all of us, that would be nice. Yeah. yeah, can I? Yes, please, Raviji, please go ahead. Yeah, one second, I haven't got it right, one second. May I? May I be, may I be a guard for those who need protection? a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a vase, for, a vase of plenty, a tree of miracles. And for the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening, enduring like the earth and sky, until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened. Thank you, Raviji. So now we'll uh, go through the verses on mind training. So we are at the moment three of us. So we'll distribute and uh, we read it again and again because it's just good to read these lines. Somehow they enter our being. So. Repetition is always good it, because we are forgetful. We forget again and again. Yes. So we'll just one by one. If yeah, one of you can maybe read yeah, this much. So uh, Saurabh, do you want to go next? Maybe uh, you start with these lines and then Raviji can read the next patch. No, I can. Yeah, please. Sure. So, just to understand, these are the Lojong root verses on training the mind. Okay, got it. Yes, we are just reflecting so, one by one on these sure. uh, verses. Yeah. Please go ahead. I know. Hope I'm uh, loud and clear. There is no background noise from my side. Is it? Uh, yeah, background? please, please start again, uh, Saurabh. Could you please start again? Sure. I think there was an internet issue at your end. Maybe, maybe it was by at my end. I don't know, but the voice cracked a bit. So, if you could just start again, I can't hear you at the moment. Is it? Yeah. Now, now you're audible. Second yeah. B. Yeah. Is it better now? Better, better. Huh. Okay. The supreme understanding is to realize the meaning of selflessness. The supreme spiritual discipline is to tame one's own mind. The supreme great quality is altruism. The supreme oral instruction is to observe the mind at all times. The supreme remedy is know that nothing has self-nature. The supreme conduct is to be in disharmony with the world. The supreme accomplishment is a continuous decrease of disturbing emotions. Thank you, Saurabh. So, uh, maybe this batch, uh, Raviji, you can read the batch that I have highlighted. Please unmute him. Okay, I want that. The supreme sign of accomplishment is a continuous decrease of wishes and wants. The supreme generosity is non-attachment. The supreme ethical conduct is to pacify one's mind. The supreme patience is to take the lowest place. The supreme effort is letting go of activity. The supreme concentration is not altering the mind. Yeah, thank you, Raviji. So, Sham, you have just joined. We are just uh, reading. Yes, uh, we are just reading these verses aloud. So, would you like to read uh, the next batch? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Please go ahead. The, the supreme wisdom is to not grasp uh, onto anything as the self. The supreme spiritual teacher is the one who exposes our hidden flaws. And the, the supreme instruction is the one that helps us to strike at those flaws. And the supreme companions are the mindfulness and alertness. The supreme inspiration is enemies, uh, hindrances, disease, and suffering. The supreme method is to be natural. The supreme way of benefiting is to help others enter the dharma. The supreme benefit of our mind is to turn towards, yeah. can you please up it? Is to turn towards the dharma. Thank you, Sham. So uh, we have been reflecting upon, uh, in the first session we reflected upon the supreme understanding is to realize the meaning of selflessness. This we have already touched upon. Then in the second session, we touched upon <clears throat> the supreme spiritual discipline is to tame one's own mind. And today we are going to touch upon the supreme great quality is altruism. So as we are aware, we just listen to the teaching first and then we share our reflections. So I am putting it on shared screen, yeah, this one. And we listen to this for a couple of minutes or more than a couple of minutes and then we can share if there is any reflection coming up. So the supreme great quality is altruism. Um, Okay, so the Tibetan says pensem. Pensem means um, the, the mind which, which wishes to benefit others. Now, in, in Mahayana Buddhism, I mean, basically, okay, there are, three, there are three motivations for the spiritual life. The first is that we practice because we are hoping it's going to make us feel better. I mean, none of these, these, these uh, motivations are bad. I mean, they're all fine, but each one is a little deeper. So the first motivation, which many, many people do for religion, is because they hope it's going to benefit me, especially in this life. Or if not in this lifetime, next lifetime I can go to heaven. And so always the motivation is that somehow or other we're going to make samsara more comfortable. And uh, most people when they go to church or to the temple or to the mosque, the basic idea is that it not only makes them feel better now, but they will be rewarded in the future. And so that is what keeps people know, being kind, being generous, and so forth. But mostly it's, because it's based on the desire that somehow it's going to make us feel better and that we're going to get the reward for that. Then the second motivation is recognizing that actually even if one goes up into heaven from a Hindu-Buddhist point of view, you're going to come down again. And um, <laughs> back into the wheel. I mean, uh, heaven is still part of the wheel. It's not beyond the wheel. And so, therefore, we're endlessly gyrating around. And one never knows where one is going to be next time, depending on our actions of body, speech, and mind in this life. Next lifetime is, you know, going to be how it's going to be. And like being in a huge prison. Really, samsara is like a prison. One time I, I had a dream. And I dreamt that I was in this huge prison 
infinite. And in the uh, top floor, it had many, many floors, many, many rooms. And in the top floor in the penthouse suite, there were people partying, laughing, drinking, having a great time. And then on other levels, people working, people laughing, people crying, people fighting, people loving, until the dungeons where people were in the deepest despair and tortured. But I realized that whether one was in the penthouse or the dungeons, it was a prison. And what is more, the fact that the people who were in the penthouse now didn't mean that they were going to stay in the penthouse. They could come down. And everybody was changing their positions. And so I thought, this is terrible. It's so dangerous. We've got to get out. And so I spoke to uh, several of my friends and other people, and I said, look, this is a prison. We've got to escape. And people said, yeah, well, it's a prison, but it's okay. You know, it's, it's not so bad. And then other people said, well, yes, but it's so difficult to get out. How are we going to get out? You know, let's not even try. But eventually, I found a few friends who said, well, all right, we'll go if you go. So running through this prison, there was this stream. And on the bank was this kind of flat boat. And there were guards, but the guards didn't try to stop us. And so we got in the boat. And then the boat uh, sailed down the stream. And then we were on the outside of the prison. And we started running. And we were running and running. I was running and then the others behind me, running, running, running. And on our, my left was all these, this huge building of the prison and all these endless windows lighted, showing exactly people partying, people crying, people laughing, people working, all the different occupations which we can go through. Each window was a vignette of a different activity. And so I was running and running and running, and the prison was endless. And I was so tired, exhausted. And I thought, you know, they're right. This prison is endless. And what's the point? I'm just exhausting myself, not getting anywhere. It's never coming to an end. Really, better just go back into the prison. And so this, this idea of trying to get out of the prison and escape is the second motivation, that we want to enter into nirvana for ourselves and be liberated from that prison of samsara. So I was on the point of turning round and going back when I thought, oh, but I'm not the only one running. My, my friends are also running. If I stop and go back, they also will stop and go back. Therefore, for their sake, I have to keep running. And as soon as I stopped thinking about myself escaping and thought of the reason I was really getting out of prison was also to help my friends get out of prison, then the prison came to the end. And the dream went on, but it's not important at this point. So the third motivation is that, that we are practicing the spiritual path in order 
that we may help others also to be liberated. Right now, we cannot help many people because we ourselves are ignorant. But if we really were awake, then we could awaken others. So let us take two minutes of a silent meditative pause and then we can share our reflections. So, uh, anything anyone wants to share or any doubt, question or reflection, you're most welcome to unmute and share. So, I think the three motivations uh, that Sunma was sharing regarding why we embark on the spiritual path I hope they are clear. So the first one was that it will bring me relief uh, so that I can have a comfortable life whenever we enter, you know, if I am suffering, I enter the spiritual path because I want some benefit out of it, you know, a relief for myself. Kuch to aram milega, something like that. That's the first motivation. The second motivation as she was sharing is that uh, one gets uh, in a hope that one gets liberated from the continuous cycle of birth, rebirth, death, uh, one hopes to walk on the spiritual path and hence embarks so that one gets release from this continuous cycle of birth and death. And the third motivation, which is uh, in in these three, uh, they are kind of levels. You know, I think I feel that in these three, it's uh, as we go ahead as a human being, we develop. You know, we progress. So as we go ahead, then the third motivation is that uh, not for only myself, but for the sake of others, I will practice. Why I will practice? Because if I remain ignorant, I don't know who I truly am. My actions are coming out of ignorance, ego, ill will, hatred, anger. Then whatever action I take can never be really beneficial for the people around me. Hence, it is important that I embark on the path so that I can also benefit others who are around. Because if I don't awaken, I don't walk on the spiritual path, a path towards my own self, path of goodness, kindness, goodwill, compassion, then uh, in no way can I benefit others around me. You know, so because I wish to benefit others around me, Hence, I would not stop and keep walking on the path towards my own awakening and hence benefiting others also in the path, on the path. So these are the three different motivations and like we all are here or there from time to time. And I, as I had shared with many of you, uh, there's this uh, movie, a documentary on Jane Goodall who is a very famous and very really a very hard working one can say environmentalist yeah sham you have something to share yes ma'am i watched that documentary and i really find uh, found it enchanting okay about how how it actually tells you three things okay 
the first things that we need to persevere, we ought to persevere, okay? And I have the adage goes that good things come to those who wait. So it, it didn't, that the chimpanzees didn't get cozy with her on day one. So she had to wait for a period of time till they got cozy with her. And then she was able to discover their way of life and the, how, how they behaved in different circumstances, okay? So this was the first thing. Uh, second thing, uh, actually, second thing, uh, we need to give our cent percent, okay? What we give is what we receive, okay? So. I don't know whether you have read the book or not, but in Rhonda Bynes, have you read it, Rhonda Bynes, Secret? So in Secret, they tell you that what you give is what you receive, okay? Means action and reaction thing. What is Newton's third law, okay? So she gave love and compassion. She allowed the chimpanzees to steal banana, okay, and all those things. And then the chimpanzees got cozy with her so that she could study her them in a more, what do you call, in a more defined manner, okay? The third thing she ends the the movie ends with her by quoting Julius Caesar that the fall dear Brutus is not in our stuff, but the fall dear Brutus. But the fall dear Brutus is not in our stuff, but in ourselves if we tend to be underlings. Okay. So here I would like to differ. See, if staff they have a role, okay. We we can't ignore the role of the staff. Okay, at the same time, the role is not that pronounced, but they do have a role. So even if many a times we try our utmost to, to be in a particular situation, but we are not in that situation. Okay, so like I was reading this book, Divine Romance by Paraman Sivananji. So there's a chapter called on fate. Okay, so in the in that chapter, he says that a man tried to commit suicide no more less than 36 times, and yet each time he was Saved. So there the staff had her whole, okay. But normally if we would try to commit suicide, normally in first or second or third attempt, we would go through that, okay. So that, that I would like to dispute on that, okay. So, so it was a good movie about that Jane Goodall, okay, and how she secured funding and later she had to get separated from her husband and go through all the human emotions and she had to eschew her mother love for her professional love and all those things yeah, yeah. and then again again it tells us that we need to unlearn many of the things that we have learned all through this donkey years okay and many a times our training maybe professional training maybe our academic bent of mind it actually prevents and inhibits us from doing certain things okay which we would have otherwise done had we not been trained and educated in that particular manner okay yeah. So she was not a biologist, she was not a geologist, she was less than educated than many of us, okay, and so she ventured out, maybe she tried that method of madness, what we can say in what you call, in the normal language, okay. Yeah, 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 very good. How I would put it out. Yeah, okay. thank you for sharing, Sham. I think one thing which also is very, very clear from that documentary is that whenever we love we have a love for something, you know, she had mm -hmm. a love for the forests and she followed that heart. Mm -hmm. She was able to follow the heart where her heart lies. Mm -hmm. And many a times I feel that all of us have uh, uh, like different permutations and combinations of skills and talents and abilities. All of us are naturally gifted with uh, something or the other, something or the other. Yeah. But many a times, uh, because of how our mind gets confused, as you were sharing, we get conditioned, you know, through mm -hmm. our education, we somehow uh, forget the calling of our heart. Mm -hmm. So, and I feel that uh, no matter how conditioned we may have become through our education or whatever bad has happened with me, doesn't matter. Even then, we can always recollect what was the dream I was born with. Because each child, even mother and Shurabindu, they say that each child is born with a dream. <laughs> it's not just some special persons. But definitely, I totally agree with you that stars definitely would have the play. They do have and, a role. Yeah, they do have a role. But at any point of time, there is so much 
that is given to us right now we are sitting here we are all healthy relatively healthy <laughs> we have a sound intellect and mind which is working functional you know completely fine we can move our limbs we can go out and help somebody on the road or wherever you know even in the kitchen or here or there right so there are many many things which one can be grateful for even yeah. when even when we think that okay much has been lost i had a dream and nobody helped me to nurture that and now i have forgotten what was the dream so i feel like really dumbed and lost out that may be true and that mm. happens uh, it's a fact that that happens with most of us but e at any certain point of time there are many many things uh, which can serve as a raw material to start with to offer yourself to the world so in this movie it was very clear that when we have love for any little thing in our own little sphere you know we can uh, live as if my life is a offering to the world mm -hmm. just like in her case the life was offering to the forest and you know saving the, the planet and the earth thing. yeah yeah and for others it could be anything little you know it could be as trivial as you can think it doesn't matter it could be jhadu pocha it doesn't matter even mother shyorabindu say that don't go by the the kind of work that you are doing if you have love for anything you feel that okay this is something which i like to do i can spend hours in doing this and this also helps me serve the world that is the little something that you should pick up in the beginning and we all have to dig really dig hard because we we may have forgotten uh, what are our goodness is you know hidden within us so we have to dig 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 and find out those talents and abilities which are very natural to us you know which in which i would not get tired for example i may be sitting you know uh, i may be like sitting like this and taking sessions after sessions and this is something which is very natural for me like i don't get tired you know, this gives me energy so each one of us has something or the other which for which we can work 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 and we work in joy and we never get tired we have to find that something and give our life to that and in that sense we can all be really beautiful uh, offerings to the whole universe our own little spheres so yeah thank you for bringing it forward sham yeah. thanks ma'am okay. anything else anyone at this point Yes, sir. My, my only reflection was indeed we talked about this world being a prison. Of course, uh, very much relatable. But uh, I'm mean, the 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 thing is, this thought of this being a prison is not a constant link. Sometimes I enjoy this being in the prison also, and I don't know the I being the same being with the same mind. Why it happens with me? Sometimes I do realize that this is a prison, and sometimes I. even though i realize i like that prison thing of prison so sometimes i feel somebody else is controlling me uh, and i feel helpless at times to say why two days back i was very much in a positive thinking kind of spiritual thinking to say yes this world is maya and all but today next two days i am enjoying that uh, sort of desires and i am okay to be in the prison you know so i keep thinking who is the real me uh, the one who says yes this vision is the true one or the one who says this vision is true but i am also enjoying that and uh, even though in spite of the fact that i know that this is a prison i feel helpless to get out of that you know again i keep saying probably that's the reason this kind of satsang may help us to again connect back and say yes uh, it's a continuous effort for someone to keep doing efforts and realize self realization so yeah true that actually uh, on your sharing i rem reminded of a couplet by kabir ji where he says man ke bahut tak rang hain chhin chhin badle soe ek rang mein jo rahe aisa virla koi so he says in english it would be uh, the mind has infinite number of colors so as you were sharing that the mind keeps on changing infinite number of colors shades you can say 
मन के बहुतक रंग हैं छिन छिन बदले सोए मीन्स एवरी मोमेंट इट कीप्स चेंजिंग एंड वी ऑब्जर्व दैट विद अस यू नो मेनी अ टाइम्स वी आर हाईली मोटिवेटेड टू वर्क ऑन द पाथ एंड देन एज यू सेट दैट वी आर आई एम सो ओके विद विद द प्रेजेंट यू नो वाई वाई द नीड टू चेंज सो दैट हैपन्स विद ईच वन ऑफ अस मन के बहुतक रंग हैं छिन छिन बदले सोए एक रंग में जो रहे ऐसा विरला कोई सो ही इज सेइंग दैट इट्स ओनली अ रेयर वन and why a rare one because walking on this path requires effort and most of us are lazy <laughs> so effort needs to be put so he says ek rang mein jo rahe aisa virla koi now when he says the only a rare only a rare one would be able to stay in one color that one color is the color of natural state of mind which is awareness you are just aware okay sadness is there i am aware of the sadness happiness is there i am aware of the happiness so when we are able to stabilize ourselves as awareness who am i i am the presence of awareness in which things can come things can go thoughts can come thoughts can go happiness can come happiness can go sadness can come sadness can go the one color that is not changing is the color of awareness and this is what we call as walking on the spiritual path sadhana you know where i am stabilizing myself more and more first of all i don't even know that i am this awareness so first it enters through intellect theory you know we begin to talk about it and then the more we talk about it as you were talking about satsang the more we talk about it the more it goes in goes in goes in and then we are able to embody it and even practically implement it so whenever we are going through experiences sometimes difficulties come who am i i am the one who is witnessing the difficulty so let us do the best that i can do let us do the best highest possible opportunity okay what is my highest possible state of consciousness in which i can act why because i am the awareness but it's easier said than done because that's why people spend uh, hours and years in caves meditating because they are stabilizing themselves in this stance of awareness and this is what teachers like that sunma tenzing palmo you know they repeatedly talk about it rupert spira he talks about who are you you are the one who is aware of the thought the feeling so this is where we take the stance so i totally resonate with what you are sharing that it keeps fluctuating as if uh, we are uh, we are having a bipolar disorder almost something like that actually because we keep changing personalities right uh, why because uh, we we start the journey from darkness ignorance and this is the journey this is the adventure you know imagine that you are going in the forest and all is mapped out and charted out okay here is a khai and here is a you know uh, animal uh, whatever hole and this is the river if everything is charted out there is no adventure there is no fun so for the sake of fun the leela is being played and for the sake of fun krishna hides from the gopis so uh, when we realize that wow you know everybody is starting from darkness ignorance i am not the only one so can i just begin to have some fun here <laughs> so who is hiding from whom krishna is hiding from himself only so who is suffering krishna is suffering himself so then slowly i think uh, the more we realize that it's actually uh, starting from darkness because we have to find the light because why because finding the light is joy you know all of us have experienced this joy no matter how little a light we find in our lives from time to time it gives us joy you know we feels that you know something is advancing i'm progressing as a human being one little kind action i am able to do and it gives me joy you know because we move from darkness to light so i would say such is the plan somehow <laughs> yeah got it thank yeah. you thank you so i thought since we are talking on uh, this idea of uh, altruism which is a kind of a selfless offering uh, to the world or to 
whoever we can offer it would be nice if we watch a little part of uh, this movie that we were talking of of jane where towards the end uh, she is sharing uh, her reflections basically on her journey and even after that there is a new documentary that was made on her jane goodall uh, the hope i think is the name and if, even i i would say that that is even uh, late like recent developments and how that she has been traveling around tirelessly to spread this message what she has received through working with the chimpanzees so let us hear this and uh, maybe it really i felt very inspired when i was listening to this so i thought i'll just share with all of you just towards the end like around 5 minutes in this movie so okay i don't know how to maximize this so okay, maybe i can do it from here yeah of the species Louis Leakey sent me to Gombe with the hope that a better understanding of chimpanzee behavior might provide us with a window on our past our study of chimpanzees had helped to pinpoint not only the similarities between them and us but also those ways in which we are most different Admittedly, we're not the only beings with personalities, reasoning powers, altruism, and emotions, nor are we the only beings capable of mental as well as physical suffering. But our intellect has grown mightily in complexity since the first true men branched off from the ape man stock some 2 million years ago, and we, and only we, have developed a sophisticated spoken language. For the first time in evolution, a species evolved that was able to teach its young about objects and events not present, to pass on wisdom gleaned from the successes and the mistakes of the past. With language we can ask as can no other living being those questions about who we are and why we are here. And this highly developed intellect means surely that we have a responsibility towards the other life forms of our planet whose continued existence is threatened by the thoughtless behavior of our own human species my life the time was perfect i was spending time in the field i was writing a book i had students so the research was secure and i could be with my son it was my life for the rest of my life it was better than anything i dreamed of but i knew that the chimpanzees across africa were disappearing So that's when I realized that I had to raise awareness about the plight of chimps in Africa and the role that I must play is to make sure that the next generation are better stewards than we've been. And I needed to take that message to the world. And since that time, it was October 1986. I haven't been more than 3 weeks consecutively in any one place. so i think this much of a window is enough just no i i would recommend that we watch the whole one sham has already watched because it just tells us that uh, 
we are all equally capable first of all no matter in how many different ways and as she shared again and again that in whatever little sphere we can contribute it could be very little you know it could be just my community maybe just my family you know, maybe just two of my children it could be anything but the idea is to offer your self your abilities you know to benefit of someone else and when we do that it really gives us a lot of joy first of all it really gives us a lot of joy and secondly it spreads the benefit to everyone so i think uh, as she was sharing that she could have easily uh, been in those jungles where she loved to be she did not have to travel here or there spreading the message of awareness but she f- feels that uh, she would have betrayed those chimpanzees whose uh, habitat was disappearing so she did not choose comfort you know at this age 85 years old around she has been just traveling spreading the message spreading the message and as she was sharing that she has not been at one place for three consecutive days just been traveling hopping around from here to there just to spread this message and how urgent that this is that we should not be destroying this planet human beings who we consider the most intelligent on this planet how sad that we are destroying each other how sad so this i i feel that this is a beautiful beautiful not only this there are many other beings also equally inspirational but this since it just came along to me and really inspired me that uh, usually we are always thinking about that if i take this step ahead what will people think of me <laughs> you know would i get the recognition would i get the fame name but when you see this documentary you see that she did not care at all for name fame or anything what people would say first she started because of the love of the forest and chimpanzees and secondly she started because she knew that she had to care for the planet so both i w- i would say and in her presence also you see a lot of love and compassion you know as if she is living for the planet for the people and not for herself so i feel that uh, this verse that we were reflecting upon uh, the supreme just let me read it again the supreme great quality is altruism selfless giving and selfless suff- uh, offering of a oneself i think this can truly truly change the world truly imagine you know five of us sitting here and uh, we just begin to see okay where is it that i can contribute and offer my presence and time so that it benefits others even that little five minutes of reflection would be enough to get give you a start not focusing about whether it will bring me something not there what can i offer what can i offer not that whether i people would recognize me or how much money would i get or you know all that so that's what we call samsara you know when we talk about give and take transaction business that's what we where we get the mind entangled and we are not able to proceed even wish even if we we may wish to at times ki painting mein man to hai बट पेंटिंग से पैसा कहाँ मिलेगा यू नो सो एवरी वेयर द माइंड इज वेरी ट्रांजेक्शनल माइंड कि ऑल दो आई लव पेंटिंग एज अ चाइल्ड बट देर इज नो मनी एंड इफ यू सी रियली ट्रूली अवर नीड्स आर नॉट मच वी कैन सर्वाइव और वेरी लिटल वेरी लिटल वी कैन सर्वाइव ऑन एंड देर इज नो एंड टू एक्सपैंड एक्सपेंशन ऑफ डिजायर यू नो सींग दैट नाउ देर वॉज अ टू व्हीलर एंड नाउ आई नीड अ टू फोर व्हीलर there is no end to that and hence there is no end to greed for money also but if we want to offer ourselves to the world in any little beautiful way possible uh, there is no end to that also we can begin anywhere so i suggest that maybe we take 2 minutes of a pause uh, delve within and then we if we can all share uh, what are our inclinations preferences and likings and where we can make a little offering of our time and presence to the world so if you could just let's take 2 minutes of a time and then we can share
So anyone who wants to begin? Any area, any field, any liking where you want to maybe now forget about people and just begin to share your presence, your time, your skills, your effort, put it in that direction. Any little sphere where you feel that it will be more uh, like it, it would be joy for me to do that. Any natural no. taste? Yes, Raviji, please go ahead. Yeah. I love I my field which I offer by communicating the written word about awareness and thing, you know, communicating it to people in, in written form. Maybe you can't talk. Um, I mean, I can't lecture like the way you do, or you communicate like the way you do, but uh, communicate the right. And you know, that way people will be aware. I, you know, spread awareness, spread in whichever field, okay, environment. Mm. Yeah, maybe that's the that's a hot topic. And uh, do you keep do you keep writing or do, are you saying no. that I would like to start writing? No, I can write. I have written, but I haven't um, published it or communicate. I mean, mm, by and large, maybe mm -hmm. to my friends and uh, that's it. I mean, I haven't uh, okay. communicated it uh, my writings to any. Uh, any publishing agent or anything like that. Okay. But that that could be my forte. I mm, mean, uh, mm. At least that's something. So you may have you know many WhatsApp group uh, of your relatives or friends or families. You would you have that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe about yeah, like my college group, which is mm, mm, and my mm. friends and mm. my tennis playing group. And, you know, about five or six groups. Beautiful. So maybe yeah. that would be nowadays since uh, it's very easy to spread messages spread, of awareness spread, on yeah. okay, uh, social okay, media so whatsapp yes. group would be a very uh, like a easy starting call point. starting point yeah starting point very yes good, very yes good. so anything that you feel that okay i want to write about this and maybe share it with all you know, you type the message in your computer or wherever in your phone or maybe write down on a paper first and then trans uh, transcribe yes. it in, onto phone and then spread it around you know very by why because it it would just give you joy and this is something which you can offer to the world your skill your expertise yeah, no. yeah maybe our group also yeah why not yes yes feel free yeah, yeah. whatever uh, you yeah, want I'll to share that. yes yeah. sure thank you for thank sharing you. yes thank you so anything anyone wants to share next And it's okay if one is hesitating or uh, even if you're not getting a completely clear idea, it doesn't matter. Even if it's a hazy idea, uh, whenever we put it into words, somehow it concretizes. So it's good, even if you're doubtful, please share. Yes, Shyam. For how it happened was that I, I did call Madam Taruf in the month of January when I, I got infected with COVID the second time, okay. Mm, so I was uh, not very happy with my present work. I mean, if I work in Punjab National Bank as a manager, but I'm not happy with uh, my present job. So I was always looking after titles and positions, and I was not happy that many of my friends, they have flown to foreign land and uh, have all, uh, many of them have studied in Ivy League uh, US schools, and but I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do a PG also after my engineering and all those things. So she told me that, uh, look, you need to come down to you come you need to come down to ground zero and then you need to imagine the thing imagine what you call imagine the bakery for fly you need to look at it from a different perspective for example you have a found health you have a fixed monthly salary which is a very decent salary in today's world okay when people are losing jobs they are what do you call they are not getting jobs losing jobs is one thing they are not even getting job even though they are qualified way beyond uh, she told me that you have a house in Delhi, which is on your name, for a, which is a very big thing, for, and you are free of debt. For so what? For so why do you need to worry? And then after when I went through some of the sessions, okay, like you taught that you people taught, taught that you need to that between the what you call between the dead yesterday and between the unborn tomorrow is the 
present where you need to be really focused and whenever you are getting angry just watch your breath that how you are inhaling and exhaling okay and then the anger did vanish okay in more than 95% of times it did vanish and it left me with a good experience okay i was this what i call i really cherish that and i was able to control my anger i was able to control my temper i was able to step back in most of the situations which didn't demand my involvement to that extent in which i was earlier involved okay so so i am really happy that all these donkey years why didn't i learn that okay or maybe almighty would have ordained it in a different manner i did learn after all these years i have learned it so uh, i feel that there should be more of people like you and people like madam taru who could teach the people to live the life in a better manner and be enchanted be cheerful okay and make the world a better place to live in so this is how i will put it put it beautiful beautiful so i think that would be your offering to the world that if you could be a living embodiment mm-hmm. of uh, that we can live life in joy following our heart we don't have to suffer and be miserable all the time yes yes and more over many a times i am able to detach myself from my presence in a particular environment or when i'm with a set of people and watch myself and others from at a distance and try to be in the shoes and be more amicable and amiable towards them although it is easier said than done it requires continuous practice okay it can't be done discreetly okay one needs to be watchful at all the times or if not all the times then most of the times okay so with mental it can be done like you said in the group that with mental ego it can be dealt very easily with physical it is way bit difficult okay <laughs> but still i am happy actually today also i couldn't go to my office because i was having a back pain but then i was able to relate myself to the teachings that you had offered to us okay and i i was a happy guy okay i am able to laugh laugh at myself more okay and what do you call how do i put it it is difficult to put it <laughs> how do i put it i don't know how to put it but yes i mean to say that like such a gush of energy i had not felt after i left college okay yeah yeah so it's beautiful you know it's it's beautiful to have this energy because this is the energy which can be channelized in right directions <laughs> so now uh, what we need because you, most of the time you know youth many youth young people like you uh, young people have usually energies but mostly it is nowadays due to the yeah, pres- scattered away yeah it's scattered away and in useless directions so now with this collected energy that you're observing in yourself this is where you can offer you know wherever your expertise is okay this is where how i can uh, offer my presence to the world and as you said you know in many little little ways it doesn't have to be one big thing you know mm. one little little everyday interactions mm. you can offer your presence and kindness and compassion you know and intelligence so beautiful and more power to you thank you thank you thank you for sharing so anything any last comments from saurav or sevin um yeah monica i don't know whether i understood your question well or not but um, since we were talking about spreading awareness about the environment uh, <clears throat> this is one thing that is very close to my heart and i really feel and i wish that i could do something for the environment i want to do but i don't know how to do you know so um as a beginner i felt like seeing my you know present age group friends around me everyone has small small kids around and these days i have noticed that you know people celebrate their children's birthday in a very grand manner you know like uh, it's it's like a very big party everybody enjoys calling their children and their friends and you know so many people home and uh, uh, celebrating that's one thing but i feel that uh, we should also keep in mind how to minimize uh, 
our damage towards the environment because i have seen even in within my family also within my friend circle you know a small gathering and then even if uh you know people could uh, do with other things they still use uh, this uh, plastic you know uh, this paper plate and paper cups and spoons and everything and then you know at the end of the party i have seen it being collected in huge chunks and then they just go and uh, throw it away you know so i feel that we could come up, come up with more uh, you know um sustainable way of you know celebrating such kind of things uh clicking pictures and loading up in instagram is one thing but you know if we really love our kids and really wish well for them uh, especially during the birthday i think i think that is one thing that uh, you know as uh, ravi ji just pointed out that we could uh, spread awareness through uh, you know whatsapp groups and all that so even i have my college whatsapp groups so it just came to my mind that um you know i should uh, uh, at least uh, make my friends aware because everybody has kids and everybody celebrates their birthdays and all in a grand manner so not not just birthdays any function any gathering it should be you know i mean we should try our best to minimize uh, our damage uh, that's one thing and uh, <clears throat> one more thing that i wanted to share is uh, i i totally agree with whatever uh, mr sham just said uh <clears throat> after joining this uh, meditation sangha i feel that uh, my understanding has <clears throat> uh, it has improved you know even uh, even if it is very less uh, still i can feel uh, that i can resonate and i can relate to your words um and that is i think uh, the result of the you know uh, the karmic action i think because uh, when you really practice it then your words have effect on others you know so that is one of the 10 virtues uh, which my lama had told me earlier and uh, i'm experiencing it right now uh, <clears throat> after joining this group i've interacted with many people before but uh, i think this group <laughs> is uh, uh, having more effect on me so thank you so much to all the founders of the group and also to the participants for you know sharing their experience and uh, uh, giving us this uh, uh, encouragement to you know work more upon ourselves and you know to reach somewhere better <laughs> yeah thank you so much thank you thank you so much yeah thanks for sharing yeah Sorab, anything from you? Yeah, I mean, uh, if I talk about the kind of work Jai like, uh, of course, I do feel happy when I connect with the this generation kids. I like to see my own challenges when I was in of that age, and I want to sometimes try to motivate him about their thought process. Uh, at times, I also write some stories, some songs. and i'm also very curious to know about the technology part so it's, a, it's all a mix but nowadays the, one of the most interesting thing which i am into is to observe myself which uh, i do struggle a lot but i i, I have started liking that now to observe my own thought process every moment but yes none of this is giving me a uh, money so indeed i know i have realized that uh, i have heard a panda of kiki guy recently the thing which gives you happiness versus the thing which gives you money may not be the same so deal with that so i'm okay with that at the moment yeah beautiful so i think uh, we can maybe towards the end we can share or inwardly check in with ourselves that what do i really want you know where does my heart lie and if we ask with a very pure intention uh, of really having the response back if we aspire that what do i really want what do i really want to do with this precious life definitely we will have the response very soon and also being patient when the response arises so it may not just happen right now but 
if you continue to aspire if we all uh, aspire towards the higher intelligence that i am ready inwardly telling that i feel ready guide me show me the light towards my path it's impossible that uh, we are not shown the path impossible but what happens with us is that we ask the question one day maybe we are having the session today and we aspire and ask send out the question but then we forget and for one month i don't remind myself of the question what was my aspiration so that's where we need to put effort that uh, this should be the only thing on my mind even mother and shorbindo also say that uh, aspiration is not like one day you aspire and then forget about it no it should be the only thing on your mind that i i feel ready and god or the divine or the higher intelligence show me the way show me the path and this should be a continuing process inward process in our life and then see the miracle happening for yourself so yeah we are all magicians and we have no idea how much power we can have each one of us has so much of power so let us begin with that little sphere wherever we can make a change make a contribution and instead of asking and demanding from the world all the time which the common mind does you know what can world give to me rather than that we can say what can i offer to the world in what way can i offer and benefit the world so let us then close here with this prayer and i thank everyone for participating very actively and sharing and reflecting together so yeah have a good night and happy practice to all of you thank you bye thank you thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you ma'am thank you